Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper which asks the question of what would a system look like if you used only software for memory protection rather than all the existing hardware mechanisms that we find in modern microprocessors. This was published earlier this year in the Conference for Architectural Support for Programming Languages and Operating Systems. And before we get on with it, the title of the paper refers to the acronym for the system they built, Carrot Cake. And what that stands for is Compiler and Runtime Based Address Translation for Collaborative Kernel Environments. So cool title but a bit of a tongue twister. This paper was interesting to me because it takes a look at a very long-standing and central abstraction in modern computer systems that of virtual memory and asks the question of how might we do that abstraction differently. Virtual memory is how we map virtual memory addresses to physical memory addresses in the hardware and modern microchips have a range of support for doing that. They have TLBs, translation look-aside buffers, they offer paging, and all this translation is done at the hardware level. This also serves as a unit of memory protection because modern kernels use virtual memory also as bounds for enforcing processes staying within their own address space. Now, even if done in hardware, all this machinery for managing virtual memory, the page tables, all that takes a fair amount of energy and space on the chip itself. Some prior work seems to show that the TLB, the translation look-aside buffer, which is a crucial part of how you translate virtual addresses to real addresses, consumes as much as 15-17% to 17 of a chip's power and takes up almost as much space on the chip as the entire L1 cache. So that is a significant amount of power as well as space on the chip that goes into maintaining and providing this abstraction. So if not in hardware, how else would you do this? Another approach to providing memory protection is to do it purely in software. There have been some previous efforts which tried to do this for managed runtimes like the JVM or the .NET runtime. In fact, there was a research effort at Microsoft called Singularity that tried to build an entire operating system on the .NET runtime, and it used the runtime abstractions and protections for memory management rather than the hardware. The difference in this paper is that the authors want to do this for an unmanaged software stack, so something that's written in C or C++, for example. And that's the central idea of this paper. The authors are proposing using a range of software techniques, particularly compiler and code analysis techniques, to offer memory protection without any hardware support at all. So they have the entire software stack from the user space programs to the kernel being compiled by their specialized compiler. And this compiler inserts runtime checks and transformations to enforce memory safety and memory protection. And this entire stack has no need for hardware support for virtual memory anymore and operates purely with physical addresses. It doesn't need to map virtual addresses to physical addresses. So in the rest of this paper, they go over the details of how they do that, and I'll try to give you a high-level overview of how that would work. But I'd really encourage you to go look at the paper. It is a really interesting paper. Let's look at the basic building blocks of this software-based solution. The first crucial piece is LLVM. This entire solution is based on LLVM infrastructure. I have covered LLVM on this channel before. I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you want to get more of a background on what LLVM is. The second big piece that they use is the whole program analysis on top of the object files that LLVM produces. That's called WLLVM. And the reason they need this is that they need the entire system, the kernel, all the user space programs, everything to 
be compiled globally so that the compiler can transform entire applications along with the kernel to insert all its protection and mapping checks. And the third piece of software they depend on is Noel, which is a library of code analysis and program transformations built on top of LLVM that operates on LLVM's intermediate representation. This is what they mostly use in order to optimize away some of the runtime checks that the compiler inserts to provide memory safety. The overall goal is to offer a security model that is the same as the traditional paging model. And this means the kernel still tells user space programs the bounds, the memory bounds within which they can operate, and that you can still call the kernel only via well-defined entry points. This is a high-level diagram of how the entire system works. And you can see in the top half that it is all very focused on compilers and instrumentation. The compiler is performing analysis as well as transformations that allows it to track all these memory allocations and how they escape and so on. But very importantly, the compiler is also inserting runtime gods that check memory references at runtime to make sure that they are still within the bounds that they are supposed to be in. The entire system operates in one single address space. The kernel, as usual, is the one responsible for allocating memory and handing out this allocated memory to user space programs. In carrot cake, they use the terminology of memory regions, and memory regions are then broken out into A spaces or address spaces. The tracking and protection of memory is done at the level of an A space. The big difference is that unlike a paging system where every page is of the same size, these memory regions and A spaces can be of arbitrary size. Now, obviously, when you're inserting so many runtime checks, the overall performance of the system is highly dependent on the compiler being able to do sophisticated enough analysis that the vast majority of those checks get optimized away. For example, you can omit memory gods if you're referencing your stack allocated variables or if you're accessing global variables. These all will by definition be within your valid address space. The system also depends on Noel, which is the optimization framework built on top of LLVM to analyze things like loops and try to optimize away checking of memory gods in the innermost parts of the loop so that performance is still good. The authors have even built their own kernel called Nautilus which is designed along these lines. Now let's look at the question which is probably on your mind, which is how does the whole thing perform compared to the traditional paging model offered by hardware? And to do that, the authors implemented a version of paging in the Nautilus kernel and compared it with Linux, which uses paging, and their carrot cake implementation on top of Nautilus. So those are the three things. And across a wide variety of benchmarks, it looks like the steady state performance is within about 10% of what you get with the standard setup, which is paging on Linux. The important caveat for these benchmarks is that the x86-64 architecture simply does not allow you to turn off paging. So even for their carrot cake benchmarks, they still had paging enabled on the chip. It's just that they used really large pages to minimize the translation overhead and TLB misses. But the main message still is that all this tracking and protection overhead that the compiler injects, and most of which gets optimized away, still gives you a system that is about on par with the traditional hardware offered paging model. And this does not even take into account all the hardware and energy savings you would get if you manage to simplify your chip to 
not include all the complex virtual memory handling. Let's look at how this relates to some other work. I mentioned the Singularity project in the beginning, and that was an entire kernel and system built on top of the .NET runtime. There are also projects like Theseus, for example, that tried to build an entire kernel in a safer language like Rust. The main difference between those efforts and this one is that this tries to be much broader. It doesn't depend on a specific language or a specific runtime. It's just using the LLVM compiler framework to compile whatever language your app or your kernel happens to be in. So it doesn't depend on a specific runtime. So that was a quick look at a pretty interesting paper which looks at this really durable abstraction of virtual memory as provided in hardware and looks at how an entire system might be designed if you transferred that responsibility from hardware to software. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.